while it's a class, for me it's also a little bit of an interactive discussion. So for, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I want it to be a little bit less formal than you would have in an ordinary class, because I don't have a lot of time. So if you, if you have questions, ask me. If you have points that you want to make, feel free to make them. Of course. Yes. Also, I think the bulk of us are KWF. I know maybe Daryl can say it's not. But there are slight variances between KWF karate and the general Shorekan karate. Obviously, most of, most of it stems from the JKA, but there are certainly differences. And the training that we do needs to be adapted to the unique philosophy of KWF, which I don't think you will find particularly foreign once, once I'm not sure how familiar you are or aren't with it, but once it's explained, I'm sure it will make sense to you. Also, I hope you understand my accent. You manage it? Okay, yes. Right. What is the primary objective of KWF Pro? Yes. Which is Ikenisatsu. Which translated means? To kill one blow. To deliver a clean blow. To kill one blow. Also, uh, also called Ichige Isatsu. So, for me, if that's the primary objective, I'm not suggesting you go and kill someone with one blow. But <laughs> you, must, you must be able to do it. So that stems from training your kyo. So, you know, often, especially as we get a, sort of to the Q grades, you start going, yeah, but I've done this basic stuff, and I did it when I was a white belt, I don't need it anymore. And that, there could be nothing further from the truth. Your basics are fundamental to everything you do. As your Iris sensei says, kyo is kyo. Kata is kyo. Kumite is kyo. So if you don't get your basics right, it filters into all of your programs. So, I'm going to work on three fundamental power sources to enhance the output of your technique. So when you actually hit someone, the person doesn't look at you. Oh, of course, he goes down. So let's start. What would you say the three main ways to make power are? Hip action. Absolutely. And probably KWF karate hips are used more than in any of the other ones. Your Hara Sensei is huge. On hip action. Those of you who trained with uh, Welcome Sensei previously, I don't know what he taught you, but I'd be very surprised if you didn't talk about hip action. Of course. Okay, so this hip action. Second thing, drive. So let's turn that slightly different. Momentum. Momentum is made of what? Mass and velocity. One change of mass, and then you can have a meal before you hit the guy, but we can certainly work on the speed component of it. And the third element? Vibration. Got a great audience though. <laughs> the ability to contract at the end of the bow. And I personally find that to be the most difficult one. Because what you find is the timing in that is off and off. So what happens is if you tense too early, you get this pushy technique. If you don't tense at all, of course there's no kim at the end of the move. So let's start with hip action. I think the first thing, what often happens is people think of punches as being trauma. Blocks as being hum. But you're only doing half move. So I'll get a hummy here instead of hummy being there. And I'll get shoman here instead of truly what we should be doing is shoman on the shoulders, gyaku hummy on the hip. So what I want you to work on from here, left leg going forward, get up right. My hand will be right? Hand up. So we start with something simple, like gyaku zip. What I want you to do from here is work on extreme hummy. And from there, I'm not going to talk too much, I want to see how you do it first. Blast the hip. Let's try. Ish. And back. 